Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at a really interesting bug in the JavaScript Expre Express uh, web framework and how it interacts with the MySQL JS package. Um, there's a way that such that a developer can try to go what they believe is the secure way to do SQL um, using prepared statements such as escape functions and still do it in a way that leaves it vulnerable to SQL injection. And uh, this is a bug that the the package maintainers for the MySQL JavaScript believe is not an issue or believe is not their problem to fix. And so it's kind of just a permanent bug that's been out there potentially since 2014. Um, we're going to dive into some of the GitHub issues that have been raised, look at the bug in detail, uh, and then look at how to fix it on uh, Vessel. This is this is something that came up in the Vessel box from Hack the Box. So we're going to play with it there. Um, hopefully it's an interesting video. And uh, it's something that if I was doing a lot of bug bounty, I would think I would want to keep an eye out for. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so let's start with this blog post. Uh, it's from February of 2022, and uh, it's about finding unseen SQL injection by bypassing escape functions in MySQL JS, MySQL. Um, and if we scroll down here a little bit, you know, we can you can read this in detail. I'll put a link in the description here. Um, they've got this example vulnerable code here, and you can see it's using the escape functions. And escape functions are typically what you think of as the safe way to do SQL um, to prevent SQL injection, right? So you define your query string here, and then you put uh, question marks where you want the variables to be. And if you then pass in, so you're passing in username as the first question mark and password as the second question mark, and presumably the escape functions are going to make those things safe so they can't do SQL injection when you put them in. At least that's what I always assumed escape functions were meant to do. Um, we'll get into like the wordiness of that when we in a minute here. Um, and so, you know, the challenge is with node uh, express, when express parses these parameters here, if they're strings, this works perfectly. Um, so if I put even if I try to put a single quote in the strings, in fact, there are no quotes in here. Um, it just doesn't, it's just not going to work. Um, so when I put in, uh, if my username is OXDF single quote, it's going to say, username equals open single quote oxdf escape you know backslash single quote single quote and so that, that my the backslash single quote is not going to do anything i'm not going to break out of this i'm not going to screw up the thing the uh query but when i put in a object here then it all changes and that's what they show in this post um we can see right here a payload where they send in username admin password is password equals one um like that nested like that and uh that's going to break this whole thing. Um, so let's let's jump over and take a look. Um, I've got VS Code up here with the you know in the in the block box. While we're doing it, we get the source code, and you can see right here this is virtually the same code that was in that blog post. Um, and so we can select from there with the username and password, um, and that's going to cause a, that that's going to be vulnerable to this attack. Um, specifically, let's we can jump over to uh, this issue actually that was raised in February of 2014. Um, about I'm running into this instance when I uh, where username equals question mark, and uh, they're finding a vulnerability there, and uh, people are talking about it in here. They say you know um, this is uh, this is happening. Um, it can be anything with a body parser. Let's scroll down here a little bit. Um, when we get into you know people are getting a little bit annoyed because they're expect you know the, you expect this to fix this problem for you, and yet there's potential SQL injection. Um, and we get down to this post right here where he says the module only has a small readme which has all the has all the question mark stuff explained. Um, in fact, if we open that up here, we can see when we scroll down that how it handles different uh, items. So numbers are untouched, booleans are converted to true false, date objects uh, converted to these strings, and strings are safely escaped. Arrays are turned into string comma string. Um, nested arrays, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Objects that have a SQL string method, we'll call it. Okay. Objects are turned into key equals parenthesis value. And that is the vulnerability that we're going to take advantage of here. Um, if we come over here and I'll just uh, create a new uh, notes.txt file to write in here. So if we come here and let's grab this right here. If we come over here and we write in and we pass in an object, and that object is um, becomes let's say let's let's just say username equals that escapes just fine because we pass in a string username is admin like that, but then our password becomes password equals uh, and then the object when it specifically says let's go over here um, 
p equals val. Um, but it actually turns out because if the value is a number, it's going to just be the number. So it's going to look like this. And this ends up getting shortened into 1 equals 1 and going away. And that, that's, that's, that's a problem. Um, there's actually, uh, well, I won't, there's, no, there's more posts. This is actually a really interesting um, issue that was raised. And it's worth, I mean, it's worth reading through if you want to understand this vulnerability more. But I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, so now let's see the vulnerability in action, right? So we can go here. Um, we can, let's see, where's our... We'll go to vessel.hackthebox. <clears throat> we will log in. We'll try to log in as admin with admin admin. It's gonna fail. Uh, let's grab my burp here. We can go to HTTP history and there's our post to login. We'll right click and send to repeater. Into repeater, we can start to change this. Um, this vulnerability works both as an X URL form encoded and in a, uh, as JSON. I just think JSON is easier to work with and easier to see. So we're going to do a real quick, uh, convert this to JSON. I wonder if there's a way, way in burp that's just sort of built in to do this. I'm not, it probably is, and I just don't know it. Um, but this is not too bad to just quit, do some, add some quote marks and some colons. And anytime I convert format like this, I always want to just make sure it still works. So, uh, we're still getting a 302 found sending us back to login. So it's, that's, that's what we see for a failed login. Um, so now, instead of admin here, we're going to put a new object. And in that object, we're going to put password equals one, because that's what they do in the post. And we send this. And you can see now we have a redirection still, but now it's going to slash admin. So that, that is a successful login. We've successfully logged in. Um, we, you can do this. Um, I'll show real quick. Let's see. We'll send this. To repeater to get a new tab. Uh, actually, let's do it. Let's do it better. Let's go back to proxy, send this back to repeater to get a new tab. And we can also do this by doing password, password, if you spell it right, equals one, like that. And you can see that also bypasses the login. So um, we can look again, we, we already sort of talked about what the SQL did there. Um, one of the things I thought would be, I think is interesting is to say, okay, so the post told us to change it to password one, like what is that actually doing, right? We saw that. So if in theory, if I change this to like uh, OXDF zero, is that gonna work? And so we can come try that, right? We can say OXDF, like we, know, we don't think it's gonna be one, right? Because now we're gonna get password equals OXDF and that's not gonna be right. So we expect this to fail, but if we change it to zero, like does it work? And it turns out, no, the answer is so proxy error from Nginx just really means node crap. Um, and so why is it doing that? Well, OXDF is not a column. And so these have to be column names. See how username's not in quotes? And so even if this is in quotes here, like it's not this, you know, these aren't, these are column names and that's gonna fail. Um, what we can do is if we can guess another column name. So we could try like user, is that a column name? No, it failed. What about username? Um, surface unavailable, that's interesting. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. Um, Okay, uh, that might have just been a bug for requesting too quickly. Um, but you can see now, look at that, we're redirecting slash admin. So we basically said, if password equals username is false, and that, that's gonna return true as well. So that we worked as well. But it's just important that you have column names. So you could actually use this to enumerate column names as well. Um, so last thing, how do we fix this? Um, and this is where the answers from the devs, if you read through this channel, basically they say, it's not our job to deal with this. We say what we handle and what we don't, it's your expectations that are wrong. You, you know, you should you know deal with it. Um, I don't think that's very good because when I see these escape functions, I expect it to produce safe things that can't be injectable. Um, but that that's their stance. Um, I've got two shells here um, in on vessel as root, so we're going to take a look at that. We can open up, um, I believe it's routes index right there. We can find. Yep, we're right here. I've already been here. Um, and so the way to solve this is instead of just putting in username and string, we're going to con explicitly convert username to a string and password to a string. And now we can save that. <clears throat> and if we come down here, we'll do, um, I'll sh actually show you. So like we need to figure out like how is node running? So we might do like a met stat minus, oh, did I lose my window? Uh, reset. Okay, nets that worked minus TNLP. We can see 8,000 right here is node, and that's the program name. Um, we could say, we went want to say, okay, so like PSAUX dub dub rep node. 
And we can see, okay, so here's our process and it is running user bin node on this thing. Um, it's running as www data. So we're like, well, now we wanna know how is that starting? Um, so one thing that's very common for how it's starting would be a service. So I might do like a grep on, let's just say like vessel. Um, and we will do a grep minus R. So it does recursively in Etsy system D and that's where the services live. And we can say, look, we found a service called Node.js service that is uh, exec starting this exact thing. Um, if we cat that, let's see, system, oops, system, man, typing man, system D, it's in system node, js dot nodes, js dot service. So we can see it is running uh, as www data, that's good. Um, so now we can just do a, because we're root, we can do service node, Restart. Um, oops. If we can do service uh, node, is it what I call it? it's Node.js service. Restart. Um, I'm not actually sure why this is hanging. Um, I'm gonna kill this for a second. It shouldn't take that long. Let's see what the status. Let's just make sure it's running. Uh, it looks like it's running just fine. So let's go over here and try. Um, let's see if we fixed it. So this right now we can see gave us a redirect to slash admin and now it's giving us a slash to slash redirect to slash login. So it looks like we did fix it. Um, in conclusion, I think this is a pretty serious bug. Um, I don't know why this isn't a bigger deal. I, just, my best guess is that uh, Node.js just doesn't use uh, MySQL that often. Like this is, as far as I can tell, the primary library for connecting with MySQL from Node.js. So uh, maybe the standard for Node.js is to be using Mongo and other types, other types of databases. Um, but if I would think, especially on the bug bounty field, like this would be a, this would be a potentially very um, worthwhile line to go down when you're testing something that has Express to see if it's using Node.js. So um, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.